Hi guys, today we will talk about the push-pull converter. It is a, a, an isolated version of the back converter. So basically you take the back converter, which is this, with the diode and the inductor, and you make an isolated version. The push-pull is a circuit like this, which has the two, in the, which has the two switches here, and it has the transformer center tapped on both sides and then in the secondary side you have the forward diode which which is basically the rectification and your inductor with the load now some point on this topology the first observation is that the problem of this, of this topology is basically the transformer, because uh, if you don't have the polar, if you don't have uh, exactly the polarity, the the exactly the polarity on this transformer here, and uh, uh, even a mismatch between these two devices can lead to a non to a non correct a non a non neutral polarity, and having a non neutral polarity here means means that you have an average current AVG flowing into the induct in, into the transformer, which is not zero. And this will lead basically to the saturation of the core of your transformer. So the push-pull saturation is one of the major problems of this topology. Then second observation is the secondary side. Uh, the secondary side is uh, not always stuck on the two diodes. Uh, sometimes uh, you can even use uh, um, voltage quadrupler voltage doubler half wave voltage doubler half wave voltage doubler circuit like this so they're basically circuit like capacitor and diode put all together like this and the and the, the idea behind the circuit is that you you charge the this capacitor through the diodes okay and basically the the output voltage you take the point that you take are in between for instance let me let, let me draw for instance this circuit which is one of the most common this is the point here this is the other and uh, you basically have at the end of the story plus two vo and the minus 2 VO here. You have plus VO here, across of this, and across of this you have minus VO. So you basically have plus 2 VO here, minus 2 VO here, and all of this you have 4 VO. So there are some circuits which can double, triple, or quadruple the, your voltage. Then another observation which can be made uh, also here, the inductor here is not mandatory. Meaning that you can also substitute this part with an LDO if you if you decided to run your push pull at power less than 10 watts, for instance, less than 5 watts. If you if you decided to you to uh, to use the push pull to supply some reference or to use some reference voltage, you don't need the inductor to filter out your your square waveform. An LDO will be enough. So let's open the lattice spice and to make this simulation uh, more close to, to, to the reality, we will take uh, on Contrib, Wurt, Power Magnetics, Transformer, DCDC, uh, Wurt, Wurt Electronics, PPTI, and we will take this. This is a push pull transformer and we will use it with an NMOS like this. Now remember to actually uh, design also the gate drive of this guy. So here we will, we will take the input voltage. Okay. And we will use both and MOS put like this. Remember to put the, uh, the source towards the ground. We will choose the best MOSFET with the lowest gate charge as possible and we will replicate also this guy 
on the other side. Like this. Okay, now uh, we need to bend our head. <laughs> we need to bend our head really because we need to um, to put the gate driver. So we will use an, an NPN circuit like this and a PMP circuit. We need this stage in order to provide enough charge to supply our gate. So let's use 10 volts, for instance. And let's pick the, the first MOSFET on the list. Let's connect uh, towards the gate, like this. We turn a resistor, R1. And let's use the signal dot param d equal to 0 0.4 dot param fs to 50 kilohertz dot param ts 1 over fs and dot param t on equal to d times ts and dot param t off equal to y minus d 1 minus d times ts dot param dd equal to 20 nanoseconds these are the parameters that we will use. Um, so let's write this guy here. 0, 5, the delay 0, rise 1 nano, 1 nano, and T on equal to T on, and the period equal to Ts. Now, since we want the time, we will put minus DDD here. Okay, uh, let's do the same also for the other, and um, uh, yes, like this. And with this, we um, okay. We need uh, the, the delay of uh, T on. And here the T on period is T off. Okay, so we are the first the primary side is actually good to go. Uh, what about the secondary side? The secondary side uh, uh, needs uh, uh, needs uh, the the two diodes. We will take uh, the short key diodes because they are the fastest. So short key diode like this with uh, a 100 volt as a background. This can be enough, so we will choose the two of them and connect them like this. This will be connected to the ground. Let's choose um, a proper inductor for this topology. Since we are in the low voltage, low power, a small inductor is enough. 4.7 micro is enough. And a capacitor like uh, um, 22 even 50 micro is enough. Let's pick a medium load like the NOM and let's give some name to these, uh, to these nodes. So let's put this node to ground and let's use uh, some, uh, some names. So this is, uh, this will be G1, this will be G2 and this will be the switching node um, no, sorry, this is the C node. Let's call it C node. This is called, this is the output voltage node. And this is the node 1, node 2, and node 3. Okay, G1, G, G2. Okay, I think that uh, everything is good. These are the, the, the two drivers, the gates, uh, and the, the, the two MOSFET on the other side. Everything is good. I think that we can uh, run the simulation for 10 milliseconds. Uh, 5 milliseconds should be enough. And let's see, waveform by waveform, what is going on. So, 
This is the gate G, G2. Okay, after a short period of transient, we have the two gate waveform which should be correct. I don't know why we're seeing this. Ah, okay, so the, the, these are just uh, these are just spikes. Okay, so nothing new under the sun. Now let's check uh, the um, the voltages across uh, this. So uh, one two and uh, the voltage three two. Sorry, two uh, three two. Yes. Okay, so there is a little bit of resonance, and I think that uh, this is uh, owing to the real parameters that I choose. No, 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 please don't crash, don't crash. Please, 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 please don't crash. Oh, mamma mia. I think that is crashing. There is too much to process. No, no, no. I was lucky. No, 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 I don't want to close. Let me, let... Sometimes the spice can be very slow. Okay, I think uh, 3.5 3 milliseconds is enough. So let me stop it here. Because there is the risk of crashing and I don't want to take the risk. Okay, so uh, let's analyze everything after the transient. Okay, VG1 and VG2 are the two gate waveform. Let's use Ctrl Y. And, uh, okay, the, the time, maybe it is enough. Maybe it is. Okay, more or less. Um, maybe not, because there are some just some spikes. And now let's check the, the waveform of, the, of V1. V1 is the waveform of the... is the VDS of, the, of your uh, MOSFET. And uh, there are some spikes going on, so probably we need to increase the, 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 the time as well. Uh, but the stress it is, cor is correct because it's two times the uh, input voltage, which is around 20. So this is correct. Then let's check also uh, V3, which has to be in the other way, and it is correct. Apart from this, <laughs> this ugly resonance, it is correct. Now let's check the C node. Okay, this, so the C node has some resonance, uh, has some resonance going on, also because uh, probably we are in the DCM. And uh, lastly, let's check uh, the output voltage. The output voltage is set to seventeen volts, with uh, a ripple which is uh, very small. To check the ripple correctly, we will use the FFT and uh, ah sorry um, view FFT using the using the current zoom range because otherwise it, it won't work and uh, let's put it to linear and let's use to zoom to fit doesn't work okay that's fine and as you can see there is a, a very small ripple around uh, uh, 700 kilohertz which is the switching frequency actually is quite negligible because we put a very high capacitance so this is a simulation with low load and we have a lot of ringing uh, oh, uh, probably to the dcm resonance now if we increase the if we increase the voltage, 50 volts, for instance, increasing also the dead time as well to 30 nano, and let's also increase the load to 2 ohm. Let's uh, uh, slow down a bit the simulation with uh, uh, 2 milliseconds of transient. Now, if we do, if we do run the simulation, um, we should see the... Um, we should see less resonance mm. now i'm talking in theory then we will zoom to this to find out the, the truth and as you can see the vc is uh, is now uh, quite clean 
almost clean. So I think that we can uh, end the video now. Thank you guys for your attention and see you in the next video. Uh, tell me now, tell me if you uh, if you want a video, more video on power electronics or if you also want a video about VHDL, Verilog and digital electronics uh, uh, as well. Bye bye.